were, I know we had some people that were at the events that we had. I know we had an event in Texas that a group did together. Um, I know that we had events in Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, so we had that. I know we had some events. I'd love to get some feedback and hear what people experienced. That'd be awesome. So since we are, all right, well, since I am in the calling out mood, why don't I just call somebody out? All right. Well, let's see if we can get some participation without me having to be naughty. Who was at an event this weekend? Who was at one of the events this weekend? Ian, how was the event that y'all had? Call Ian out. Not sure if he's in a position. Susie, were you at an event? I Hello I there, Chris. What's up? Real quick. Hi. Oh. Go, go ahead. I'll wait. Ladies first. Aw, thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? I have my earbuds or my things on here. We can can you hear me? Through. Yes, we can. Yeah. Actually, I was at a, an event um, a few weeks ago in Rochester, New York. It was the first one with Lisa Yan as our host. Oh my gosh. I really don't even think I'm over it yet. <laughs> it was so amazing to be in, uh, Nietzsche was there. I just saw you saying hi. In this small gathering with um, Garrett and Sylvia, feeling so loved and so supportive and so supported. And it was just, you know, we're hanging out in, Lisa's beautiful home in a, in a great casual environment with Garrett and Sylvia. It was so amazing and uplifting and they, they shared stories and we laughed and we cried and we learned a lot more about them. And I, I, we all left there just incredibly, um, like I said, loved and supported and just so grateful that we're here. And if, <clears throat> and I've said this a couple of times since, if you can get to one of these events anywhere, you have to go. It, it was incredible. And they brought that skincare. <laughs> that stuff is, and I didn't, I was, my ticket wasn't drawn and I didn't get one, but I was able to sample and it was pretty incredible. And, uh, I feel really, really filled up after that. And they left us feeling really, really good. So thanks for giving me a few minutes. So get out there and get yourself a ticket somewhere. <laughs> Perfect. Let's uh, call on Ian Prather. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing tonight? Can you hear me okay, Chris? Sure can. So this thanks. past month has been kind of it's been a roller coaster ride for us personally because we've had um, a member of our team that passed away. Um, Fran Hurley that I see is on here um, was very, very close um, to that lady. And there was, you know, multiple ladies on that team, some of whom I'd been introduced to before, um, not all of whom I had spoken to personally. And so um, during this past, I don't know, week, two weeks, whatever it's been, you know, um, I've have just got on call after call with Fran of just getting connected to these ladies and getting introduced and just basically doing like a welcome call, even though people have been here for a while. And with all of that going on and us trying to, you know, deal with, with life and death and, you know, that's really what, what has happened with that part of the team. Um, I found out Mike and Cassandra were going to be going to Dallas because a different part of the team uh, a couple of ladies on that team, Carrie Cotus and Candy McAfee, had decided that they were just going to do it. They were having their own event. And Cassandra was invited to go speak at the event. And I wanted to take Mike out for his for birthday dinner. And so we literally drove four hours to take them out to dinner. And they said, come to the event. And so we just kind of snuck in. 
like I don't even know if they even really knew that me and Betsy was even showing up and and literally I showed up there to do hugs and high fives. That was my agenda to to cheer these guys on. I don't know there was 10 or 12 ladies at this this house they rented doing their own kind of thing like we did with the diamond retreat um, back in Orlando and we did that whenever that was and and um, we just took some time not only to hear Cassandra and Mike kind of share their story of being involved with this company but you know just to talk and listen kind of the same thing we did on the calls with all those ladies gets getting to know people and listening to them and answering questions and sharing our experience and sharing mistakes that we've made and just sharing this journey and guys that is what this to me is really all about whenever people say it's all about the relationships guess what um that's true that's absolutely true and it's about finding and connecting with the people that want to be here and want to be doing what they're doing and are wanting to learn and improve and get better at what it is that what we do heck i came away from this weekend feeling like i learned some stuff and that's really what it's about to me is being open to be in this community, be surrounded by amazing people and be open to learning the next new thing. That, that's what happens every time I'm around Chris Shweda. That's what happens when I'm around Ricky and Jessica. Um, and then the other cool thing that happened because I see Molly Rinks on my screen is that Molly saw me make a post that we were up there and she said, I'm like 40 minutes away. And I said, well, can you hang out? And she said, yes. And I said, come on, girl. And so Molly drove over and we just met in the hotel lobby and just hung out for a couple of hours and just talked and just talked about where our heart's at and what it is that we want for our business and for the future and some things that we can do to move forward into that future. And so, you know, guys, it doesn't take a corporate thing for us to decide to get together and hang out with a group of friends in this business and iron sharpens iron as one person sharpens another. That's how it happens is by us getting together and just deciding to do it. Our event got canceled in Houston. You know, things happen, life happens, but I'm super grateful and thankful. Like that was really the main thing that I left away from this weekend was just feeling super thankful for those ladies that flew in and drove in from all over the country to this centralized location. Um, it just made me proud to be a part of this team. And with that, I'll shut up and let somebody else talk. Chris, thanks for giving me the chance. Awesome. Good stuff. Let's go to Nietzsche real quick. Nietzsche, do you want to share anything of what you experienced at the event? No, oh, sure. <laughs> gone, so I'll call sure, him. Thanks. Um, yeah, I really liked something that Garrett had said that really stuck in my head. Um, he, we were talk, talking about like manifestations and um, visions and, you know, and he was just saying that you know, everybody could have the vision and the vision board, but you really need to feel yourself doing that and, and being in that. And then he said, you know, our, the problem is that a lot of times, as much as we want to be ahead, we keep thinking about things that are behind us. So he used the analogy of as if he had a rubber band attached to the back of the chair that he was sitting in and, um, and he'd start walking forward, but he could only get so far because then you get pulled back to those thoughts that were in the back of his head from before. So then he said, but if you keep pitching yourself forward in your future and stop looking back, and he said, then you, you vision the rubber band in the front chair and he said, and it's just going to keep pulling you more forward to that, to what you want in your life. And it made, just made a real lot of sense to me. And um, it really helped me. Like th and, and since then, actually, I have not been looking back at anything. And, and so I just, uh, I really enjoyed that. They were very down to earth. Um, everybody was really nice. Um, I, had a, I had a great time. And um, it was just, it was really, really inspirational. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. I see we have some Sterlings on. Not sure which ones, but let's call them out since they're here. Are you guys uh, available to, to share real quick? Sterling, Sterling, Sterling. Peter, Carmela, one of y'all. Not sure if, I don't know if we're going to get them or not. Was anybody at one of the Minnesota events?
Hey, Chris, this is Mary Overson. I was at Hillary Scott's event actually in Rochester, Minnesota. Perfect. So what did you experience over there? Honesty, genuineness, heart, uh, everything that anybody would be looking for in a company. We, I saw it in, in Garrett and Sylvia. And I have to say thank you so much to Hillary because she put on a, just the nicest like spread of food. She was like the best hostess anybody could even ask for. She's just the sweetest person. But um, it, I, I guess the biggest thing that I came away with was the um, conviction that Garrett and Sylvia truly are advocates for us. They truly do want the field to win. They are there to just do whatever they can to make things happen for us. And I'm grateful for them. And of course, um, like Susie was saying, we laughed, we cried. <laughs> Sylvia has a way of just bringing out the tears in me. <laughs> so it was a good thing we got to sample that skincare afterwards also, because I was probably having some little bags under my eyes, but it was, it was amazing. And as Susie said, if anybody has a chance to go to one of these, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you do. If you have any, any thought in your mind that you might possibly want to, don't have a thought anymore. Just do it. It's great. You will come away refreshed. Awesome. Thank you so much. Anyone else want to share if they were at one of these events? And then we're going to, we'll move on after this. Peter Carmela, Peter Carmela, calling Peter or Carmela. My wife's laughing at me again. All right. So since nobody else is going to share, I'm going to tell y'all, I am mad at my wife. Now she's about to come in here and get whatever. All right. Um, and I'm not really mad at her, but I over and over and over. And, and I want to talk about programming real quick because um, she's laughing at me about this stuff. Um, you know, today I was... Um, I had a, uh, everybody knows I've been hustling dirt and all that, but I'm like, I'm sick of pushing dirt. I'm sick of having to run the, the bulldozer and all that other kind of stuff. Like I like it, but I don't want to do the crap all day. I don't mind doing it, you know, go do it for an hour and then leave and then come back or whatever, but it's been raining almost every day. So I, I told him, I'm like, look, y'all either get an operator out here. Or I'm, you know, whatever, like, I'm not going to sit out there all damn day. I don't need a job. Right. Um, so with that being said, you know, today they had an operator and we're talking and um, he's like, what do you do? And then, of course, you know, have you heard about the happy coffee everyone's been talking about? He's wondering how we have this big piece of property and knowing I have an excavator that's mine and, you know, different stuff. And he's like, how do you do this? And basically um, was asking me questions. So, of course, what do I do? I sample them, send them the link. And um, he is sitting there going, oh my gosh, like I felt the pills because I gave him the max and the max caps. And I also gave him, you know, some samples of the coffee. I said, don't take it together. So he took the caps right then and there. And within 15 minutes, he's like, wow, like I feel so calm, so chilled. But then also I have a lot of energy where I want to do stuff. Ah. And, all right, uh, let me mute. All right, so um, with that being said, um, when we were talking, he was talking about how like all I've ever done in my whole life has been some kind of laborer of, of some sort, like he's operating equipment, but at the end of the day, it's labor. You're doing something with your body, even though you're not sitting there throwing a shovel, operating a shovel, like, uh, the McLeans would say, um, a shovel operator, but you're operating something and it's not necessarily something where you're just thinking with your mind. Yes. You have to have common sense to be able to operate any kind of equipment, even a shovel. But with that being said, um, you know, what I want to talk about and why my wife is laughing at me every day and I'm mad at her is because she changed after 20 years, 20 years, she changes where we have our garbage can. Like, can you believe that? Like, what in the hell are you thinking, woman? We've been having the garbage can in the same place for 20 something years 
it was inside of her pantry, which she's like, it's just grossing me out, like opening up and there's food, whatever, and blah, 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 whatever. So she puts it and she moves it a whole foot and a half away from where it was outside the pantry, a whole foot and a half. Right. And I'll catch myself over and over and over again, opening up the damn pantry. And then she's laughing, going, you got to retrain your brain. And the thing is, is that it's crazy how we get into a program or a cycle and that becomes the way that it is. And we create habits and we tell ourselves, and it's funny because the Messinis on the way to Dallas, they stayed with us the night before. And they when they went to go, they've only been here one time at, prior to that. And the first thing they do is they go to try to go throw the garbage away where it was the last time. And then they're sitting there going, where's the garbage? And it's a whole foot and a half away. But it's crazy how whenever we get into the program of doing something a certain way, that becomes the way that it is. And that becomes our story. It becomes our habit. And everyone gets mad too, but it's not in the group like the kids is like, ah! The kids. So what she's saying in the background was she's not talking loud enough. Why don't you just say it loud and come over here and talk so I don't have to do it. Yeah, well, she's laughing because everyone in the family is now, the habit is to go to where it's been. The habit is to go right to where the program is. The habit is to do the same thing you've been doing over and over and over again and do it like that. And it's crazy how we have to shift our habits to do something different that's better for us. Because now we got this pretty looking thing where you press a little button and all kinds of whatever stuff over there. It's bigger, so it holds more. We can put bigger bags, all that kind of good stuff. So there's benefits to change. There's benefits to shifting the program. Like this one wouldn't fit in there because there's, it wouldn't, couldn't have a lid because there's shelves and different stuff like that. So there's benefits to it, but we get stuck in our program. And it's funny to be able to experience it and see it that like even now, like today I went to go open a door and I was like, ah! and I caught myself and I got mad because I was like, I went to the wrong spot. And I wanted to share that because I want to know what, I want you to think about it. What habits are holding you back? What stories have you told yourself that this is the way that it is? Or, you know, uh, well, uh, uh, this is how I've always done it. This is the way that it's always been. I've always been like this, or I've always done that, or I've always whatever. And how are those things holding you back? Because anything in life that you're gonna get good at comes from practice. And it comes from over and over and over again. And our business is really simple. You heard multiple people share, and we'll have, I saw Kamala uh, jumped on here on a different link or whatever. So we'll have her share what they did real quick, and then we'll go back. But I see you, Carmel, I saw you like opening up another link. I know you're probably in two different rooms. So <laughs> go ahead, share what, cause I'm gonna tie all this in. Share, how was your event? What happened and? Hi, oh my gosh. Thank you for waiting for us. We just had to situate uh, our cute little boy, our little man. Oh, the weekend was incredible. If you can go to an event, go. And it wasn't just incredible because, oh, we get to be with, you know, all these wonderful people, it was incredible, but what what Garrett shared just casually, we had a very intimate gathering in uh, in, in, in our home and in, in this uh, community here, community room, and he and Sylvia just talked, they took questions, hard questions, uh, realization that they want to do everything and anything possible to build this company for us like they're they are dogs at work man they don't stop right you know that feeling they don't stop they want to build products that make a difference they want to make sure customer service they want to make sure everything is the best it can be so that our customers will say 
hey, I wonder if that's a product that Happy Co sells because I want to buy from Happy Co because I get great customer service. I love the person who helps me. I love the vibe, love all of it. So, you know, that's the big picture. But he, um, I, I kind of got a little uh, <laughs> nice love slap from uh, from Sylvia, because as they were sitting at the front of the room and everyone gathered kind of closely, she said, Carmel, I sense that you're uh, disappointed that there aren't more people here. And I said, uh, yes, I am, uh, because we expected a maximum, which is 30, and we had about half of that. And she said, it's not about the amount, it's about who is here. And I thought about it for a moment, and what I couldn't wrap my mind around was, here are these two really important people who flew all the way here. I should have a thousand people in front of them because they're so amazing. But what she made me realize, I feel that they're amazing because I know them, but someone from the outside, they don't, they don't get it. So I have to take the steps and make sure they have an experience with our product. They understand who we are to you know, kind of press into our, our community and just be, just be myself and stop trying to push people in to do something they don't want to do, right? So she made me realize that whoever was there was the most important, and it was true. And what the event did was it lifted up not only our belief long-term in the company, which we had anyway, but just that I, I am good enough. And some, some months it's I'm not moving as fast as I want to, but I'm still all in. And I'm more all in now than I ever have been. And what does that do? That makes me want to do more activity. That makes me want to share with more people. They are um, all that you would expect and more. They're just, you know, just how I feel about you and Ricky and Melissa in our life. They're, they're that. They took the time to, to talk with us. Peter has better nuggets, like he took better notes on things that uh, Garrett shared with him with the group and then and then privately like he asked him what did you do when you built your you know thousands of people downline when you spent 40 years in the field and his first thing was dmo and his morning is spent doing the things that we talk about doing doing during coffee you know that kind of stuff and then his afternoon is spent helping the team so he, he shared that if you can go to an event just just go there's something about being in the community being with people seeing people like carly showed up i, I couldn't believe she was here in our in our home uh, all the way from oregon and people came in from iowa and wisconsin and further up uh, north of minnesota and they, they took the time and what they got out of it was you feel connected you feel responsible to to build i feel very responsible to really build a nice big business and not just for me for other people you know, we're getting what we need from it it's providing an income it's providing us with the product the happy the happiness of the products but now really just go and help other people and have a conversation you don't have to be hard hitting in fact one of the uh, pieces of advice was oh peter's here great he has great information was to go back and apologize did you uh, press someone so hard to be at the event and i and i had done that with two uh, actually three uh, men that were a perfect fit for us and Peter would be able to mentor them and it'd be, they'd be just perfect. So I pressed them pretty hard to be here and none of the three showed up. So uh, Garrett suggested that I reach back out and say, look, my zeal for this is maybe over the top and I apologize. Our friendship is, is first and um, I'm just super excited about it and this is why I'm excited about it. So they understand why I'm excited. Hey, if it's not a fit for you, I treasure our friendship. Now, doing that gets them off the hook, right? For not being there at the event, and it and it helps us maintain our friendship. Perfect for Mindset Monday, right? It helps us maintain our friendship, but it also gives us an opportunity to revisit it. And that's the piece I'm going to turn over to Peter because we got some great advice that I've never heard before about the making the list, right? So I hope this is helping someone. It was so exciting to have Judy Willison here. Uh, and I failed to send you a personal message that I wanted to, Chris, because this woman is living the culture that you guys originally designed. So that was my introduction of, of her. Uh, it's real. She walked in with a homemade carrot cake that she made for the event. <laughs> it was just incredible. Like she baked, she baked a cake. Oh my gosh. And it was extraordinary. And it just made me feel like we can just be ourselves, like getting together as friends and still talk about business. We had prospects there. We have had a couple of actual customers who came to the event. 
and we could just be who we are and have a normal conversation and serve them, which I loved, serve them some cake and coffee that was so good, and let them see who we really are instead of putting on some sort of demeanor that all striking towards making them join my business. That's, that, that's not good. As a weaver, I can move the conversation that way, but in the end, I get hurt, and so do they. So we, we really learned a lot. Is this cool that we're talking so much, Chris? No, you're you, good. Yep. Come on, come on over yeah. here. You guys, yeah. it, was, uh, it was amazing. The carrot yeah. cake for breakfast, by the way. Yeah. The next morning. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, uh, I just step away to tend to the lad and get him showered and shaved and everything. Anyway, um, you know, the thing that I took away from this weekend, and Carmel talked about the list thing, but the two things were, um, Garrett said, you know, the power of a committed few uh, is unstoppable. And when, uh, when I think about the group we had there, and then I think about this group, you know, we've got 50 some people on here, and this is, this is the heart and soul right here. And it's a committed few compared to the size of the organization. Um, and, you know, the people that are on here that I'm looking at, I've seen Todd and Lauren, and Suzanne, and Nietzsche, you know, these are committed people, committed to sharing uh, happiness, happiness ambassadors, sharing the opportunity throughout the world. And we are doing that. I mean, we just opened in 21 countries and you guys know all that. But the thing is, is that sometimes we get blown away by the numbers. You know, it's like I was saying, you know, when, when Garrett was here, you know, I, I wish I'd had a thousand people here in front of him. But at the same time, if I'd had a thousand, I would have wanted 2000. But the people who were there were the ones that are supposed to be there. And as this some tour continues throughout the summer, that's what it'll be. And what's really cool is Gary and Sylvia, they are, that's what they're all about. Come, you know, come, the people that are there are the ones there. They, they don't go, oh, you didn't have enough, you didn't meet your quota or anything like that. It's all about delivering a message to people who are there, the committed few. So uh, the second thing was, you know, in this last year, the whether it's called pandemic or whatever, it was devastating to a lot of people, a lot of small business owners, and uh, myself included, as far as my small business, which was down to about a quarter of what it normally is. Um, but because of this opportunity and because of this business, it, we, had, we barely had a little bump in the road as far as finances go because of the coffee business. I'm so grateful that we had it. But right now, today, there are a whole bunch of people out there who don't ever want to go through that again. And they're looking for some insurance against that. So they've got their, you know, their 401k, they've got their, their, uh, their, their day job, so to speak, that they know they could go away just like that if a, another whatever comes up. Um, but by having an online business, you have some insurance, you're hedging against the things that can happen. And we're diversifying our income and we're having multiple streams of income that Chris talks about. And the thing is, is that more and more now, people recognize that, you know, two years ago, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I got my job, you know, I'm, I'm good to go, got my retirement package, you know, now all of a sudden they're going, wait a minute, maybe I need something else. So um, those are the two things. And then the last thing about the list, and then I'll shut up. Um, we we're talking about uh, activity. Garrett's built huge businesses in his, when he was in the field, and I said, what, what was your daily method of operation? And he said, you know, mornings were my time. And what I would do is I would reach out to five, 10 people every day, you know, me my, on my front line. Uh, and then in the afternoon and the evening, I would help the team, whether it was home meetings or it was, you know, one on one calls. But in the morning, it was my time to dig in. And he said, you know, he asked me, he said, you know, if you talk to five people a day for a hundred days, how many people is that? And it's like 500. He said, do you have a list of 500? Yeah, I probably do. Uh, but I've been through the list. And he said, 
the thing is, is people's lives change every 90 days. All right. And so you talk to five people a day for 100 days. And some of them will become brand partners. Some will become customers. Some will say no. Some will say not right now. You go back through that list after 100 days and start at the top and go back down to the bottom again. Now, in the meantime, you're also adding to that list. But you never, you never throw the list away. You never go, oh, they're done. They're crossed off forever. You develop relationships. You know, and I call them every three, four months and I go, hey, how you doing? Great. You know, hey, this coffee biz, you know, we talked about it six months ago. Hey, now we have a weight loss system that's mm -hmm. freaking amazing. I've lost 30 pounds. All of a sudden, maybe they're interested. So the thing about it is if we are building our list and we are willing to continue relationships with those people that we've had all along, we'll never run out of people. Yeah. And, you know, I've been in that position uh, where, well, I've been through my warm market. Guess what? No, I haven't. Because people's lives have changed. Six months ago, two years ago, these people that went, nah, nah, not interested. Guess what? It might be time. So, anyway. Um, and that was new, like to keep the list. Because I was throwing my list. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Carmel even said, yeah, we, we, we threw, used to throw the list away. Oh, forget those people, you know, and uh, not anymore. So, that's what I got. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. So I'm going to give you a little tip on what uh, Peter just shared on something that you could say that always keeps it open to where that list is always reusable. As you're getting off, you just say, do you mind if I keep you informed? That's it. All you have to do is, hey, look, I know timing's not right right now. Do you mind if I keep you informed of what's going on? And 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to say, yeah, sure. And, and guys, I've recruited people years later off of doing that exact thing. And I even had a guy tell me, he goes, I've never dealt with somebody that follows up as much as you do. And if you do any kind of sales um, whatsoever, basically um, it boils down to over and over and over following up. It normally takes seven to 10 touches for you to close. Now, how many of you all are married? Like some of y'all are married or dating somebody. Did you close on the first time? Or did you like date them over and over and over and over? Like you don't get married on the first date. So if, if that's the way that you operate in your dating life, it makes sense that you operate your business like that. Like a, a friend of mine, it's funny because a buddy of mine married a girl that he tried forever and they were the just friends for a while. And I mean, and he really wanted her and like over and over and over and they would, he would like start to maybe go on a date or two and then they, they wouldn't. And then he would ask again and ask again and ask again. They've been married now 20 years or more. And, but it boiled down to he didn't close on the first date. He kept following up and following up and following up and following up. I mean, not everybody's lucky enough to have a woman attack you like I did, where my wife was just stalking me, you know, she's about to come in here, but, um, you know, stalking me, you know, because of my wonderfulness and just like tracking me down and tackling me and saying that, you know, uh, whatever. But for most people, that's not the way that worked, but it sounded really good on a call. Um, but it really boils down to over and over and over following up. So if you just say, do you mind if I keep you informed? That's really all you need to say. And it opens that up. Thank you so much again for, for sharing. Um, so guys, everything boils down to, um, one practice you heard over and over from every single person that shared, you notice they kept talking about community. They kept talking about the love. They kept talking about that connection. They kept talking about, guys, this business is about relationships. This business is about building relationships and making people feel important. And guys, anything, like especially in terms of prospecting, you're not going to get great the first time. So you have to do it over and over. Plan, do, review. So I'm going to share another quick story because I put a big, probably... I think it was in May, 
I, I, was, I basically took my boat out and we went to a friend's camp and we had to go the long way because the, the, the bridge, there's a swing bridge that opens up and it was broken. And we went and it was really rough water. We had to go through some open water and it was like really basically beating the hell out of us, right? And everybody was like, let's not go that way. Let's try to get under the bridge. So on the way home, we try to get under the bridge. Well, the wind was blowing, the current was pulling, and we had to get, we had maybe about 10 inches on each side and we had no inches on the top. I had to fold the tower down. So I'm like literally under the wheel like this with the tower and the bimini down and I couldn't like grab the sides or whatever. And as we're going through, I hear, <laughs> and I literally knocked a hole in the side of my boat. And I called multiple people. Of course, it was above the rubber rail, so it wasn't like it affected it. I couldn't use it or whatever. And I called multiple places and no one could get to it um, for months and months and months. And it was just driving me crazy seeing this scratch slash hole in the side of the boat. So, and this is what I love about the business is because we have learned knowledge, which you learn from jumping on trainings and different things like that. We have activity knowledge that we get from doing it. We have modeling knowledge where we get to model after someone else that has done it before. And then we have teaching knowledge from there. Well, guys, learning on YouTube isn't all of that stuff. And the fact that you can't like talk to people and they leave stuff out and all that other kind of stuff. So I'm now on my third time. I got it about 90 something percent, but I had to teach myself how to do fiberglass work. And it's not in just like, I know how to do fiberglass work but it's in the sparkles. It's in the metal flake, which is the hardest thing to match up. And I'm sitting here mixing glitters together and all this other kind of stuff, putting it on a, you know, putting it on a piece of the thing to see if it looks like the same color and all that. And then you, I did it and it didn't, I mean, it looked close, but not really. And then, then I did it again. And then my gun didn't work. And I tried to, you know, and I'm learning stuff. And I started going out and talking to people that did fiberglass work and getting different input on how to do it and stuff like that. But my point is, is that I did it. And then basically I, I had to sand it and do all this work and learn, oh, that doesn't look right. And do it again and do it again and do it again. And the last time it looks, for most people, it looks really good, but I will get it perfect. And the thing is, is that the only way to get good at anything is to do it. And what I can assure you is that you're going to make, I wouldn't call it mistakes, but you won't do it as good as you do it after you do it multiple times. Can we all agree with that? So I'm on time three. I'm on the third time, third try. And I mean, I probably have $500 into doing it myself probably a five or so hours. But the thing that makes me feel good about it is that when I talked to the shop, they said that they never charge less than eight to 10 hours on a job like this because it could be very time consuming. And I only have five in it. So I'm like, I could do it another time. And, but it looks good enough to where I will wait till a little bit later on the season and I'll do it. But I promise you, I think I got it down now. I think that this, this last time will be the last time. I believe that doing it another time will be the best time because I've done it wrong a couple times. I've learned things through doing it wrong on how to do it better. And the thing is, is that you have to will, and most people are afraid to take that step because they might make mess it up. But I look at it like, you know, the worst case scenario is I have to sand it down again, which is a pain in the butt, by the way. But I, I just do it again and do it again. And the thing is, is that as long as I have the boat, I can continue to do it over. It's not like it's going to change it where, oh, you can't, you can only do it this many times. No, but your life is the exact same way. You can do it over tomorrow. You can do it over the next day. You can do it over the next day. You can do it over the day after. It doesn't matter. You get to do, as long as you're breathing, as long as you wake up the next day, you could do it over. But the worst thing that you could do 
is just leave the scratch there. And many of us have scratches in our life. We have things that are messed up and we're afraid to fix it. We're afraid to take the step to do it. We're afraid to do something. Oh, I don't know how to do that. So right now my, my son, um, his truck is starting to leak um, radiator fluid like on the, through the inside of the cab, which me working on equipment and vehicles for most of my life, like I know it's probably the, the uh, heater coil inside the dash. And I'm sitting here going, well, we got to take it apart. He's like, well, I don't know how to do that. And I said, neither do I. But this is the thing. We do have, we could YouTube it. And, or we could go look it up or whatever. And I found things step by step. 10 steps, boom. Step one, step two, step three. And I'm like, watch it. But, you know, it's, it's funny. Like the kids, they want me to watch it. Or they want me to do it. And the thing is, is that nobody's going to live your life for you. No one's going to fix everything in your life, your finances, your relationships, whatever. Sometimes stuff breaks. And you have to be willing to step out and be willing to work on what it is because he's not going to go bring it to a shop. I just made him buy new tires for his car. I mean, he had to buy new tires this week. And he bought their 35 inch by 20 inch rims and all that other kind of stuff. So you know, thousand plus dollars for tires. And he's like, oh my God. My neighbor was telling me today, he's like, yeah, Noah was telling me. He's like, oh, he's like, I'm broke. Telling him he's broke, which he's not. But the thing is, is it's the first time he's ever really had to step out. Now, could we have bought the tires for him? Yes. But the thing is, is that you're not teaching your kids by doing everything for him. Could I just go and fix everything for him in the, in the truck? Yes. But if he doesn't do it for himself, he doesn't get to experience that. So basically, I found him a good deal on the tires. I, I helped him with that. I basically found the place to go bring it to get the tires put on. And I said, you should get a wheel alignment since you're doing it. And he paid for that. So he's had, having to do all those things. But the bottom line is, is that in life, you have to go through stuff and you have to learn through making mistakes or just stepping out and doing it. The worst case scenario is you stay the same. The worst case scenario is you have that big scratch on your life. And the thing is, is that as long as you keep or are willing to work on that scratch over and over and over, you can fix the scratch and you can get it to look exactly the way that you want but you have to be willing to do the work. You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and do something that you might tell yourself, I don't know how to do it. So to tie all this in, what are the habits? What are the, what are the things that you've been accustomed to that you've told yourself that is keeping you from having the success that you want? What is the story you're telling yourself? Are you going to the garbage can the wrong place over and over and over again? Or are you willing to grow? Are you willing to do something different? Guys, the bottom line is, is that we have a vehicle that every single one of us can change our lives if we're willing to do something about it. But you have to be willing to take the step. You have to be willing to make that list. You have to be willing to pick up the phone and call the people. And not in the biggest thing that holds people back. The largest thing, and this is Think and Grow Rich, the largest thing that holds people from success is worrying about what other people think. It's the number one thing, not number two, not number three. The number one thing that holds people back from creating the life that they want is worrying about what other people think. And what I could tell you is that all I would be worried about is what you think. And as I look at that scratch, I even sent pictures to different people and I'm like, look at this. And they're like, man, that looks great. And I'm sitting here going, no, I still, I still see some imperfection in that. It doesn't matter what other people think. It matters what you think. And to me, I'm going to keep working on it until I get it perfect. And for you, what I would work on is keep working on you until you get it perfect for you. Not for somebody else, but you get your life perfect for you. 
No, who the hell cares what other people think? They're not paying your bills. They're not basically raising your kids for you. They're not basically uh, feeding you. They're basically, so who the hell cares what other people's opinions, who cares what people think about, oh, they might say this or they might whatever. Rejection is an illusion that doesn't exist. And the only place that it exists is in your own mind. And for those of you that are married, I mean, come on, you know how many times you might've tried and you got told no. And it's just like, you know, we ignore. And we just act like we didn't even hear that. Like how many of you all are married? Your, your spouse says something, you just ignore him. Like, da, da, you know, my son actually did it to me the other day. I was talking to him, he just ignored me, right? And the bottom line is I could have taken that as rejection or whatever. But the thing is, is that you can choose how you look at whatever. You could do it when it comes to your spouse. Why not do it when it comes to the world? When you feel somebody says no. Now, this is when it would matter. If somebody said no and you drop dead, then you might not want to talk to anybody else. But the only thing that changes in your head, nothing changes. Everything's the same. Your business is the same. Your life is the same. Nothing changes. But if they say yes, things can change. So all no's are created equal. All yeses are not. And you don't know if you're one yes away from a breakthrough in your business. And you have to be willing to go through the no's and to be able to ignore them to move on to the yeses. Love you guys. I hope you got value tonight. And I will see you all later next Monday. See everyone and see everyone on Saturday. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Chris. That was great. Thank you. 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 Thank you.